I have played all 370 games to date on Board Game Arena. Now, before I go into anything else, I just want to say I am not sponsored by Board Game Arena. Although I would love to be, and I probably deserve to be, because this video is just going to be complimenting them on just how kind of insane their selection is on their website. If you don't know what Board Game Arena is, it's a website where you can play a lot of games, board games, just automated program versions uh, for free with a membership. Or you can, you know, pay a little bit and get a, like a, you can play the beta games as well. Um, during quarantine, uh, back in March 2020, uh, I was losing my mind, as a lot of us were. And I was searching for a way to play board games again because I was so used to playing them in person with my friends. And then we were all separated and isolated in our homes. Uh, and I tried other stuff, but Board Game Arena was a site I stumbled upon. And I started playing on March 31st, 2020. It is now the middle of September 2021. So it took me about a year and six months, but one bucket list goal I had for myself was to play every single game on the website at least once. This took a long time because, to Board Game Arena's credit, it was they're constantly adding new games and just and now not all of them are great in this process i have played a lot of real stinkers just some absolute dog shit games but i've also played a lot of great games so i'm just going to talk about some of the stats of my experience along with uh some lists of games on the website that i think are great um but yeah that's 370 titles just to show you how often they add new games to this website. I finished this goal at like 368, and then literally right after I they added another game. And then they added like another game and another game the next two days. So they're constantly adding games. By the time this video goes up, there will be more games that I haven't played probably on the site. But I consider the goal done, even though I'm sure I'll continue catching up and playing the games that I haven't played. But yeah, I finally did it. Overall, I played 866 times, and I won 352 of those times, giving me a win ratio of about 40.6%. Pretty good, I gotta say. Considering the vast spread of just all the different types of games, I won about 40 to 41% of the time. I'm gonna go into, first off, top 10 games I played for the first time on the website. Uh, these are games that... Before Board Game Arena, I had no, I had not played them yet, and I discovered them and really enjoyed them. Number ten is Illustory. Illustory is this very fun game where basically you're coming up with creative captions for cards. It's based off the Japanese word game Shiritori, where basically uh, you're trying to chain words. So like you got these fun art cards, and you are going, okay, uh, if my word ends with e. Then my, I'm trying to play a card and have it start with E uh, with a caption. And the fun of it is sometimes you can come up with really creative ways to like justify, oh no, it's like an excellent dog or something stupid, you know. And then people vote on whether or not that's acceptable or not. Really simple, uh, plays really well on the site. I don't even think people like it that much, but I enjoyed it. Number nine is Kingdom Builder. In Kingdom Builder, you're uh, just playing these terrain cards and you gotta connect these settlements together and if you have the ability to play adjacently you have to keep connecting them there's different scoring cards it's thematically pretty bland but gameplay wise it's 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 good fun like it's not an amazing game but uh it's easy to learn and what i enjoy about it is uh the sort of like there are some cool like building powers that help you manipulate the houses as well as you know every game feels unique because the scoring conditions are different very simple uh easy to learn fun game kingdom builder number eight beyond the sun if you like tech trees in games this is the tech tree game for you all about just like getting enough shit to like unlock the next part of the tech tree and then you get more perks and then you can build up your engine and maybe do some space combat and then unlock more in the tech tree and more and more and more so satisfying not too complicated this you know it looks a little more complicated than it, than it actually is pretty accessible 
really fun, you know, tech tree advancement game, Beyond the Sun. Number seven is New Frontiers, which I believe is a re-implementation of Race for the Galaxy, which is also on the website and is also a great game. Uh, I've played Race for the Galaxy, I've played Roll for the Galaxy, but I actually think New Frontiers is my favorite version of this game. I think it simplifies and streamlines a lot of things that are honestly pretty confusing about Race's uh, iconography, and you know, it, it lays it out clearly, it plays smoothly, it still has that same very satisfying, like, you take an action, everyone else takes the action, but you get the bonus. If someone asks me which version I want to play, it's going to be that one. I'll gladly play Race. Roll, I'm okay on, but Race is still good, but I think I like New Frontiers better, and that is also on the website. Number six is Letter Tycoon. Letter Tycoon, I was very pleasantly uh, happy with. I love word games in general, uh, but I feel like Scrabble is kind of like the chumps game. This game gives me what I want in a word game, because basically what you're doing is you're making words with letters in your hand and then you use the money you earn from playing those cards to buy patents uh, on letters so that whenever people use those letters you earn money and you know one thing i haven't mentioned yet but what's really nice about board game arena is that it automates a lot of the money giving out you know with a lot of games it can be a little fiddly with you know adding or the math but you know what's great about this site is it just ching 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 gives you all the money you need uh, whenever the cards are played. Really fun word game. One of my favorite word games, I think. Aside from, like, maybe Paperback. Number five is a really stupid game. And it's not even that great of a game. But I've had so much fun playing it. And that's President. President is the classic. You're just trying to shed the, all the cards from your hand. If you play a single card, everyone else has to play a higher single card. If you play a, a pair or a triple of the same card, they all have to match or go higher with the different set. It can honestly be a really bullshit game, and it's also a game that's all about punching down, because the first player out becomes president, second player becomes prime minister, and they get to steal cards from the bottom two players. It's pretty unfair, but it's very fun if you get to become the president. We actually call the game Rats for Breakfast, because we like to imply that the losing players uh, are poor and eat rats for breakfast. So uh, I think a lot of my friends don't even remember what the game is actually called, they, call it, they know of it as Rats for Breakfast, but it is President. Very silly card game. Had never played it. I believe it's in Persona 5 Royal, which I haven't played, but that's kind of funny. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a fun party game. President. Number four is Can't Stop. In a similar vein to President, Can't Stop is very stupid, but very satisfying. Essentially, you're rolling dice, and you're using the combinations to climb up columns on these mountains. And if you get to the top, uh, you get to claim the column. Uh, however, if you ever, once you put your three pegs on and they start moving up, uh, if you ever don't roll a combination that works for those three pegs you selected, you you uh, bust and your turn is wasted. Really, really funny. I have the honor of, I believe I have beaten the game twice on my first turn just by nonstop rolling just to make sure all three columns went to the top. It's very hard to do, but it is very funny. That's also a game that I think really benefits from automation, because otherwise there'd be a lot of, I gotta calculate the adding, and but Board Game just presents you with the combinations you need. Number three is Targi. This is a fantastic two-player game. I actually used to own it, but now I'm like, it's on Board Game Arena. I, I gave my copy away because I think it plays really well on, on the site. Targi has this fantastic system. It, the theme is like the Tuareg people. Uh, they're a nomadic desert tribe and you put your workers outside on this grid uh, and you do the actions or whatever the, you put your workers on and then wherever they intersect in the middle is where you do your other actions. However, uh, if you place a work, one of your workers facing a, a row or a column, you block your, your opponent from putting one facing it. So it's this really fun game of like, I want to make sure I place my guys in the right spots so that they intersect on the spots I need. But since you guys are taking turns placing them, it can be this almost game of chess. Like, I'm going to put it here. It'll block him from going there. And if he goes there, I'll go here and connect these. And then you use the, you know, use the resources to buy tiles and stuff. And you're kind of like making your own tile array of points. Uh, fantastic. One of the best two-player games, I think, out there in terms of strategy and design, and that's Targi. Number two is The Lost Ruins of Arnak. I owned this game, but because of pandemic, I couldn't play it. So I played it on the website first and loved it. 
and then I played it in person, still loved it. I still have the copy of the game. It has really nice pieces. That's one thing Boarding Marina can't do, is, it, you know, it'll never fully replicate the really nice components or, you know, laughing in someone's face in person. But Lost Ruins of Arnak is fantastic. You're sending out your, it's like a light deck building. You're adding cards to your deck and playing them to send explorers out to different locations to either get stuff or, you know, uncover, um, like, different areas or fight monsters while also doing like researching up a track and there's kind of like a race for that as well uh the card play is great i'm a sucker for really good card play in games like comboing or playing cool powers this is a fantastic combination of worker placement card play all these things i love it all uh, i think it looks great too and it plays really well in board game arena as well that's lost ruins of arnak number one my favorite game I discovered on this site is Perudo, or Liar's Dice. I love this so much, I bought a set for my own. In Borgi Marina's version, what's nice is it does all the checking of the dice for you instantly. Whereas in person, there is a satisfaction to raising the cups and counting them manually. They're both very different experiences, but both equally fun. But if you don't, if you don't know Liar's Dice, you're essentially rolling dice under your cup, and you're trying to guess how many dice of a certain number are under all the cups, and you're kind of making bids. And if somebody thinks you're wrong, they can call your bluff, and if they're right and you are wrong, you lose a die, but if you are right and they are wrong, they lose a die. Hilarious, so many games of this, like, it's it, it just plays so easy, anybody can learn it, and it's just full of joy and jeering. I love Peruto. So those were 10 games I played for the first time on the site, here are 10 great games that I already owned, uh, or own, or owned, I think owned before, yeah, that are on the site that I think are great on online as well. Number 10, classic Love Letter is on the website. If you don't know Love Letter, you're playing different cards to try to uh, either be the princess and, you know, have the highest card or eliminate the other players. Number nine is Forbidden Island. My, it's always dear to my heart because it's the first real board game I ever played uh, that got me into the hobby and the version on the side is, works quite well. I like good co-ops. Also, uh, not on this list, but Pandemic is, you know, if you want to beef it up, Pandemic is also on the website and has a very similar feel. But yeah, Forbidden Island, trying to escape the island, you're moving your pawns around, doing actions, and trying to pick up, find uh, the treasures, and escape before the island sinks. Uh, always a fun little game that's Forbidden Island. Number eight is Teotihuacan City of Gods. This is a, you know, much heavier game than the other two. And you're using your, your dice workers to go around this board, and you can, you know, like, build up the pyramid in the middle, or build houses, or develop technologies for your people. It's, it's a heavier Euro game. I do keep the original because I do love seeing the tiles in the middle, but I will say one of the real good benefits of Board Game Arena is especially the heavier games, makes it much smoother. Also, I didn't mention this, you don't have to set anything up. That's incredible. You just, bam, game is ready, play a game. Damn, they should sponsor me. Number seven is The Crew. Uh, the Crew is a fantastic cooperative trick-taking game where you're going through missions like, this player has to grab the green one first, or this player has to grab a red five and that player has to get a yellow six. Uh, if you, and if you mess it up, you, you fail and you have to start over. I believe Board Game Arena has the entire campaign and you can play through the whole campaign, which is crazy. I have this in person and it's really fun. One thing that's nice about Board Game Arena though is you don't have to reshuffle when you fail. You just boop and you retry. Really great game. Uh, I love co-op games and it's another, another solid one. Number six is Seasons. Oh, one of the older games, not in general, but in my collection. You know, it's one of the early games I really latched on to. Uh, you roll these Seasons dice to play cards that you drafted, and it's all about playing cool combos and earning crystals and victory points, and, uh, yeah. Uh, the game, the Board Game Arena offers all the cards, uh, in all the expansions, and it's still very satisfying. I will say Seasons can be a pretty mean game, uh, and, you know, I do think it's better with less people versus more, but... Regardless, I'll always be down for a game of seasons. Some of the cards are overpowered too, but that's kind of the fun of it. The fun of it is like seeing what cards you can draft and the best way you can utilize them and maximizing those points. If you like those kind of mean competitive card games with cool dice that you know you have to draft to get stuff, uh, I highly recommend seasons. Number five is Viticulture, uh, another worker placement game uh, that 
is uh, very elegant. I do keep the physical version because I do love how it looks with all the components, but the Board Game Arena version is very good. You go through different seasons of actions and it's all about playing the right cards and how you're aging your wine and it grows in value and you can sell it. And it's, it's very robust. It feels very thematic, you know. It's got this nice, like, ah, romantic, uh, economical, ah, yes, I am in the vineyard, I'm selling my wine, I'm growing the grapes. It's, it's got a great feel to it, and it also has some very fun uh, strategy and co combos and stuff you can play with, with the cards. Uh, that's Viticulture. Number four is Agricola. If Viticulture is like the more relaxing, uh, romantic worker placement game, Agricola is... You're gonna feed your family or they're gonna fucking die. Love Agricola. Um, the game does a great job of handling... There's a lot of stuff usually like with all the cards and all the boards and everything. And the game's interface is really good on the site. I love building up my house, getting kids, getting all the farm goodies. It's still, I think, probably my favorite Rosenberg game. Just on how pure it is. Some people don't like how strict it is. Or they want the freedom of, like, say, like, a Gaverna. But I love Agricola, and every time I play it, I always enjoy it, and it's on the website. Number three is Railroad Inc. Railroad Inc. is fantastic in person. You're drawing your, uh, with markers on a board, you're rolling dice, and you're trying to connect tracks. Uh, there's highways and railroads, and you're trying to put them on your board, uh, and you have to put them all on. And you're trying to connect exits and do different scoring mechanisms. It's really fun, and the online version is great. Uh, they have four different expansions. You can play the base game or the two red version and the two blue version games. Uh, I had never played the red version. I only owned the blue version. So that was really fun. Like, I think the lava and meteor expansions can be a little chaotic, but I enjoy them. And what's nice is that you have the option. Another thing I didn't mention, God, they really should be sponsoring me, is that a lot of these games, they have the expansions as well. So you can turn them on, you know, add whatever expansions you want. Kind of fucking crazy. But yeah, Railroad Inc. Uh, really quick games too. I love flip and right, roll and right games, and this one is fantastic. And on that note, number two is Welcome To, which is really addictive. I think one of my favorite flip and right games. You're writing numbers on these houses and you're trying to, you know, fence them off into different neighborhoods for points and racing to like get different configurations of neighborhoods before your neighbor or your opponents while also using different powers with the cards you pick to do different effects. Like you can, you know, build pools or build parks in your neighborhood or uh, you can change the numbers or doubles or duplicate a space with a penalty. Fantastic flip and write game. What I love about those games is everyone has the same choices. So, you know, you get to see just how different everyone's board becomes by the end. And yeah, it's a great game. Welcome to. I also own the physical version, like, you know, this, this entire list. And yeah. Highly recommended. Number one is one of the funniest games on the site, and that's Six Nymphed. Classic, you know, take that game where basically you have these rows of cards where everyone plays cards simultaneously and they slide into rows in ascending order. But if you play the sixth card, you have to eat all the cards in the row and lose points. Or in the regular version, it's gaining points, and the online version is losing points. Whatever. But regardless, taking cards is bad, and it's hilarious as you, like, everyone reveals their cards and the board game arena will sort them in for you, and you just watch as people go, what, no, no, fuck, as you know, they notice their cards sliding into that, that beautiful sixth slot of a row. It's hilarious. I play it all the time on board game arena. I'll never get tired of it. It's such a mean game, and that's six nymphed. So that was 10 games that I already own that I think are great to play on the website. And finally, just if you're out, out of curiosity, here are the top 10 most played games by me in this experience. Number 10 is Dice Forge. I got rid of my copy of Dice Forge because this site is faster. While I love, you know, the actually putting the dice together, yeah, the online version replaced the physical version for me. I played Dice Forge nine times. Number nine, I played this game 10 times. President mentioned it before. It's always fun to play on my, you know, board game charity streams. It's a hoop. Number eight is Potion Explosion, which I played 11 times. This one surprised me because, you know, one of the big wow factors of the game is the, you know, physical components watching the marble slide down. I used to own this and then I gave it away because this version is just faster. And 
they do a good job of, you know, you take out the marble and you get to watch the marbles fall down, even though it's just a picture. It still feels satisfying. The last time I played Potion Explosion in person, it took so long that I gave away the game immediately after. I was like, I like this game a lot, but I would much rather play this on Board Game Arena. Number seven is For Sale. Classic uh, um, game where you're trying to like compete to buy properties, but the thing is at the end, you're also going to uh, sell those properties for trying to get the most profit. Uh, it's, just, it's very quick, very funny. Uh, I played this 12 times on the website, and yeah, it's a, it's another great, you know, party game, simple to learn. Inevitably, everyone's gonna fight over the space station. Number six, Railroad Inc., I mentioned, uh, 13 times on the site, and I have played each expansion at least two or three times now. Five is Seven Wonders, which I played 25 times. Seven Wonders was a game that I enjoyed when I played it in person, but actually playing it with, you know, a big group and being able to play quick games now i get it like it's a really simple drafting game of you're building up your little civilization and if you have certain cards you can get other cards for free in terms of drafting one of the best drafting mechanisms because you are you know what your your neighbors need and a lot of the stuff is affected by who your neighbors are so you're like okay i'm gonna take this card so that they don't get it because uh, i know they need it they need this material or they need this card or scoring card but I'm gonna take it instead. Classic game, works really well on the site. That's Seven Wonders. Four is Welcome To, I mentioned. Uh, I played this 28 times. There was one night where uh, me and a couple friends, we just played it like 10 times in a row. We just kept playing it over and over and over. It's that simple. I love the rematch system on Board Game Arena. Uh, we played until like 4 a.m. Fantastic. Number three is Can't Stop in the same vein, 29 times. You can't stop playing it. You, the games go so quick sometimes that you just want to play again. And then, you know, there was one time where me and a couple friends were just trying to get the one turn victory over and over. <sighs> good times, good times. Number two, Six Nymphed, 81 times. That just goes to show how much we, it's just a constant a mainstay on the board game streams. I love it to death. It's so funny. And I didn't mention this before, but we call the shit-eating game because we we uh, imply that when you eat the cards, you are eating uh, feces. So uh, eat shit or a six nymph is number two. And number one, Perudo. I have played 163 times on the website. Again, I cannot stress just how simple and fun the game is. The website would be worth it alone if you could just play Perudo. But the fact that it has 369 other games is also great. But yeah, I fucking love that game. Overall, that's. Pretty much my experience on Board Game Arena. Uh, I'm still gonna be using the website. Gonna be, you know, as new games come out, I gotta catch up, right? I gotta retain my crown. Yeah, if you guys uh, enjoyed this video, let me know. I'm always happy to hear people enjoying the board game videos. Yeah, this was a bucket list goal that I was really hungry to do, and I finally did it, and it feels really good to be the king of games. Thank you everybody for watching. I'll see you in the next one. King of games. Signing out.